Hi, everyone. So my name is Mohamed Red al uh, from McGill University in Montreal, Canada. And my project is called Marcy, a multitask deep learning framework for synergious score prediction of drug risk. Uh, as many of you know, cancer is a major health concern and also a leading cause of death in the world. And it is also a very complex disease for which standard treatments can sometimes be ineffective when they're dealing with complex tumors or even result in adverse effects when dosages are, of drugs are increased too much, causing drug toxicity. Uh, for these reasons, drug combinations have been introduced as a better treatment alternative, even the fact that uh, treating by different drugs at the same time can allow the targeting of different pathways, for example, but also reducing the dosages of each drug and therefore reduce the risk of drug toxicity. Uh, when we're talking about drug combinations and in particular drug pairs for uh, the scope of my research project, we're interested in synergistic drug pairs. Uh, a synergistic drug pair is a drug pair that uh, when drugs are given at the same time, they have a greater therapeutic effect than giving them uh, separately. And we can actually quantify the synergism using what we call synergy scores, uh, which basically represent the difference between the therapeutic effect of a drug pair given at the same time and estimation of the individual effects of these drugs if they do not interact with each other. Even though we're able to measure and quantify synergism, it is still challenging to actually design synergistic drug combination. And the reason for that is there is so many possible combinations that we cannot test and measure the synergism of each possible one. And for these reasons, uh, we need computational tools that can tell us in advance uh, if a drug pair given to a specific cancer cell line will be or not synergistic. And in that context, I present Marcy, which is a deep learning framework that predicts the synergy score of a drug pair given to a cancer cell line. Uh, the way Marcy works is by first learning uh, embeddings that have that re that are different that represent different views of a triple. So a triple is composed of two drugs and a cancer cell line. So Marcy, using two parallel neural networks that are fully connected and have bottleneck architectures, would first learn a representation of the whole triple and another representation of just the drug pair. These two embeddings uh, will then be concatenated and used as the input for a third neural network. This last neural network will actually be the one predicting the synergy score of the drug pair. It will also predict the single drug response of each drug composing uh, the triple, making Marcy not uh, a single task, but a multitask framework. So predicting at the same time, the synergy score, but also the single drug responses. Um, to be able to learn these embeddings, uh, we need features that describe each component of these triples. So to represent the drugs, we used uh, the, the drug signature, which is the drug-induced uh, gene expression of a cancer cell, of a specific cancer cell line when given a specific drug, which we obtained from the LINCS data set. Uh, we represent the cancer cell lines using their gene expression profiles, which we obtained from CCLE. And finally, the different drug pairs, uh, I mean, the different triples and their corresponding synergy score and in particular, the ZIP synergy score, which is the one I'm using in this project, uh, were all collected from the drug comp data set. Um, to evaluate the performance of Marcy on the prediction of the synergy scores, we follow a five-fold cross-validation using two different data split strategies. The first one is called leave triple out, where random triples are selected from the whole data set and put in the testing set. And the remaining triples are used in the training uh, set. The second data split strategy is called leave pair out. Uh, this time we randomly select the drug pairs and any triple composed of these drug pairs will be uh, put in the test set while again, the remaining triples will be used in the training set. We first evaluated the performance of Marcy on the regression task. So predicting the actual zip uh, synergy score. Um, and we evaluated using three different metrics, Spearman correlation, Pearson correlation, and root mean squared error. And we compared the performance of Marcy with different uh, state-of-the-art models, uh, such as Matchmaker, Tree Combo, and Deep Synergy, among Others, we also compared it to machine learning models such as random forest uh, linear regression, which I didn't put here for the sake of space, but uh, overall Marcy outperformed all these uh, models, that, all the models that we compared it against on all three metrics. Uh, th that was on leaf triple out, and we can make the exact same observation on leaf pair out where Marcy outperforms all the models across the board. We also evaluated the performance of Marcy on the classification task, so predicting if a drug pair is synergistic or not. Um, to be able to do that, we converted the true zip uh, scores of each triple into two classes, so synergistic and antagonistic using different thresholds. So any triple with a zip score above considered synergistic, and any triple uh, with a zip score be below the threshold was antagonistic, and any triple with a score falling between 
both uh, threshold was just discarded and considered as noise. Uh, we can see here Marcy in red outperformed the three uh, state-of-the-art models uh, that we can see in the other colors on all the threshold on leaf triple out. And we can make that same observation again on leaf pair out, except for the plus minus 20 threshold where the uh, Jeep Synergy matchmaker uh, matched the performance of, of Marcy. Uh, so Marcy has different uh, design specificities or benefits. Uh, the first one, it's the fact that we learn different views of the same triple, so the, tri the whole triple and the pair. And we wanted to actually see how this is beneficial for the prediction of the synergy scores. So how these views are actually uh, help Marcy uh, predict best the synergy score. Um, so we actually try different views, so learning representations of other views using different encoders than the ones that Marcy uses. So the, only the triple, uh, the cancer cell line and the pair, the cancer cell line and the whole triple. And on the leaf pair out, on the, all the three metrics that we use, we observe that Marcy actually uh, perform, predicts the best, uh, the zip synergy score when learning a representation of the triple and the pair. We, want, we also wanted to look on uh, how informative the embeddings that we learn are in terms of synergism. Uh, and one way to visualize that uh, was by uh, looking at the, the embeddings that we actually learned from the triple encoder. So we extracted the embeddings that Marcy learns on all the triples composed of the SKML28 uh, cancer cell line and we applied a PCA dimensionality reduction and only kept the top two components to be able to visualize them in two dimensions. And we can see here the red dots representing the synergistic uh, triples and the blue dots, the antagonistic ones. Uh, we were able, again, to differentiate them using uh, a threshold, which was plus minus 20. And here we can see in 2D using the PCA that actually these embeddings are highly differentiable, uh, highly separable, sorry, on, on two dimensions. So they're actually informative in terms of synergism. Uh, another aspect of Marcy is the fact that it's also predicting the uh, single drug responses, so not just the, uh, the the synergy score, making it a multitask framework. So we wanted to see how having a multitask uh, predictor is actually helpful or not. So we just turned the multitask predictor of Marcy into a single task single task predictor, and compared the both performances. And we actually observed that Marcy performs way better with a multitask predictor uh, on all metrics. So by six percent, for example, on spearman correlation. And we also like turned the also turn the single uh, task predictor of other um, of other models into multitask ones to see if it's actually helpful for other models and not just the one that we design. And it's actually helpful for some of the uh, state of the art models such as matchmaker and deep synergies that can perform better when having a multitask uh, predictor similar to the one that Marcy has. And actually this, the fact that we're predicting the single drug responses actually have an impact in the training process where the embeddings that we learn are actually more predictable, uh, more predictive in terms of synergism when, having, when also predicting the single drug responses. Finally, one last uh, design aspect for Marcy is the drug features that we use. So as I mentioned earlier, we use drug signatures to represent the drugs. There are actually a variety of, of features that we can use to describe the drugs. And uh, among these features are the chemical-based features such as molecular descriptors or Morgan fingerprints. So we just compared the performance of Marcy using the drug signature with um, with chemical based features and we actually observed that the drug signature lead to a better performance on the three metrics that we have uh, compared to chemical based features. Ex one thing we noticed is actually combining all these features together will lead to a slightly better performance. So a very small uh, increase. However, this was too small to actually justify the complexity that we that Marcy would have by uh, having that many features to represent the drugs. Finally, once we uh, confirm the performance of Marcy and the different the design specificities, we predict the, we predicted the synergy score of novel drug combinations. So there were more than 130,000 uh, novel drug combinations. So drug combinations that were not included in any of the data sets that we used. And we were actually able to identify some synergistic ones among these new uh, drug combinations. Um, and from among the ones that we uh, identified, we actually looked into the literature and different independent studies. And we were actually able to confirm that uh, some of the drug combinations that Marcy identified synergistic were actually also uh, verified to be synergistic by other independent studies, such as the combination of lapatinib uh, with vincristin and imatinib with vincristin. Uh, another drug combination is the viliparib with docetaxel, for example. And finally, we also looked at tissue-specific synergism, where we looked at drug combinations that were uh, synergistic applied to 
cancer cell line coming from a specific uh, cancer. And we're actually able to identify again a uh, breast cancer specific drug combination, which was Paclitaxel and Ruxolitib, which again, we confirmed uh, using different articles in the literature. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, looking forward to any question. Thank you very much for the presentation. Questions? Please. Just a second, somebody's coming up. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I, I like uh, the problem that you're solving and I wonder, I have two uh, maybe questions about um, maybe related the problems. Uh, one is, uh, <clears throat> When you try to uh, do synergy, and I wonder why synergy is always necessarily better, because sometimes uh, the drug doesn't work is because there are heterogeneity in the disease. And when you test a patient, you can't really find out what specific condition. So you don't need a synergy. In fact, you need just combination that have uh, just the drug will capture different subtypes of the disease in order to work. Having synergy, sometimes you could boost up the, uh, the efficacy, but then the side effect. So that's, that's part one. And the second is, uh, I wonder if you have looked at the sequence. Right? So because sometimes it's uh, taking one drug first and that versus another, uh, that could really be uh, more helpful than the, the just focusing on the synergy. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I uh, for the first question. Uh, so why synergism is that important? Uh, I'm only applying this model on preclinical, so only cancer cell lines. And on cancer cell lines, synergism can be considered important because we're only looking at the therapeutic effect of these drugs when given at the same time. Uh, so basically, if the cell will have a greater or better therapeutic response when two drugs are given at the same time when we compare it to giving these drugs individually. So in the context of cancer cell line, it is, uh, I guess, easy, easier to quantify and see compared to patients. Uh, but for the clinical setup, I can't answer your question. Like, I'm sure I'm more medically, medically, I don't know. Like, I'm not sure how to answer your question. And for the second question, I'm not sure to understand what you meant by sequence. So is your question giving two drugs at the same time, why is it better than giving them one after the other? Is that your question? Yeah, that's the question. So A, okay. B, or B, A, or both at the same time? So A, B, and B, A is considered the same if they are given at the same time. Uh, giving them A, B, or B, A at different times, that would be another a completely other uh, subject where we're not looking at the response at the same time, but we're looking at sequential responses. So that would, I don't know, I don't know that would be considered synergism or not. And again, it depends, it could be better or not. I'm not sure. All right, more questions? Yes. Thanks for the talk. Um, have you investigated the availability of the amount of cell lines on the model performance? Because for other disease areas, you might not have the amount of cell lines that are available for cancer. Uh, we're only focused, uh, we only looked at cancer cell lines, so I haven't looked at other diseases. Um, for cancer, there are plenty of cell lines, but I can't say for other diseases. <laughs> 